command is a powerful pattern to know because essentially you're wrapping a method into an object. This is perfect for strategy or turn-based games, or in the example today, allowing our player to organize combos for their character. Now, once your method is wrapped up in an object, it can have properties. You can store it in a variable, and you can execute it right away or in five minutes. You can pass it around to other objects, or you can serialize it and even send it over the network. Shout out to Anas, whose comment inspired today's example. Let's get into it. Let's start by defining a class for our hero. I want all of my commands to execute animations, so I've written a small animation manager class already. I'm going to make it lazy load using the null coalescing assignment operator here. If the assignment manager is not null, use it. Otherwise, assign the animation manager to the variable and use that. Next, we need some public methods that we can wrap in our commands. I'm going to expose three methods, attack, spin, and jump. And I really want to execute all of these skills for all of the creatures in my game using commands. So I'm going to extract an interface here called iEntity that we can use to enforce that contract. I'll move that interface into its own file, and then we can get to the command. Now, all commands will require one method, which is execute. Classes that use a command object don't need to know anything about the method or methods being called inside the execute method. They only need to know that they have a command and it can be executed. Now I'm going to make it return a task as well. This isn't a requirement of the command pattern, but I know that I want each command to run for a minimum amount of time because they all have animations. If I had a command that didn't have an animation in this scenario, I could just make it wait for zero. I'm going to make a base abstract class for all of the commands related to my hero. So the hero is going to have to store a reference to the I entity, which is my hero in this case. And we can take that in through the constructor here. We'll make it protected so that it can be called by the classes that are going to extend this. Now here, I'll just have an abstract task execute. The concrete versions of this class can fill that out. I also want to have a static factory method here to create commands. So anytime I want to create a hero command, I can call the static create method here and pass in the type of command I want as type T. For those of you who haven't seen this before, activator create instance is a static method of the system activator class and has numerous overloads. One common use for it is to dynamically create an instance of a type. It's especially useful when the type of the object is not known at compile time. Let's make our first concrete command. The attack command will take in a reference to our hero in the constructor. Now the execute method for this command is going to run the attack method on the hero, then call the animations.attack method, which returns its duration. Now using the new awaitable class in Unity 2023, we can wait for that duration before running the final method, which is to switch back to our idle animation. Now if you aren't using Unity 2023, you could use task delay or enforce a wait with other methods, maybe a coroutine. Now, before we go too much further, I just want to take a quick peek at the animation manager that I wrote. Now, some of you that have been watching the channel for a while know that I don't really like dealing with the mechanism system. And so what I prefer to do is write a little management class if there's not a lot of animation. So here you can see I've got public methods for attack, spin, jump, and idle. All of those methods call the private method play animation, which just does a crossfade and then returns the duration. Now, if we look into the data I've got here stashed away in this region, I've got all my attack hashes being calculated using the animator string to hash method. I've defined my crossfade duration, and then I've set up a little dictionary based on those hashes and how long I want all of these animations to run. Now, this works really well if you just have a small amount of animations. It's easy to set this up, no problem. But let's go in, in back into Unity and have a look at how many animations there actually are for this character. You can see there's about 20 of them. Let's blow this up a little bit with shift space. So you can see by the time you add all your transitions and all your parameters, this little window here is going to start to look like animation hell. And I'm just going to superimpose an image on here that, you know, trying to deal with something like this is just almost impossible and it drives me crazy. Uh, so uh, before we move on, I just want to point out one tool that I like to use when, it, when I get a lot of animations or have to start dealing with animation layers and blend trees, and that's Animancer Pro. So Animancer Pro does basically a souped up version of what I just did in code. 
It lets you programmatically control all of your animations. Highly recommended. Let's get back into code here and write up our last two commands. So we'll have a spin command and we need a jump command as well. Just before I add the last command, I'm going to move all of these hero commands into their own file. So yeah, let's add one jump command here. Copilot will fill it out because it's basically the same as all the others. So the final thing we need is a class that can run our commands and manage them all. So I'm going to call that the command manager. Now it can live on our player in this case because I only have one character in my game at the moment. Or you can have this component be sitting on a game manager, for example. And you might allow your player to select units in your game and then issue commands for each of them. I want to point out here that I'm going to use a serialized mono behavior for this class because for the demo, I want to be able to show all of these interfaces in Unity. Now, the ability to serialize interfaces is built into the Odin Inspector, and this came up in a comment on a video last week. Now, I tend to take it for granted because I've used Odin in every single project for years now. Black Friday is coming up in a couple weeks, and this tool is always on sale, sometimes for 70% off. So if you don't have this yet, I highly encourage you to pick it up when you can. Now, beyond just serializing interfaces, it has plenty of helpful attributes. You can set up awesome enums in the inspector. You've got the required attribute. Uh, you should pick up the validator too if that's on sale because it fixes so many problems in your project. It's unbelievable. Using Odin, I'm going to expose iEntity so we can see it in the inspector a single command so we can just try running a command with one and then we're going to make combos so for that i'm going to use a list of i command next i'm going to separate out the execution of tasks in particular because i want them to be awaitable so i'm going to put that into a command invoker class that will just take in a list of i command iterate over them and execute them all waiting for each one to complete each time so with that out of the way let's come back to the command manager and get a reference to that we can just create a new one here now at the start, I know that I'm going to put the command manager on my hero, so we can just get the iEntity component from this game object. Next, let's define our single command and our list of commands just by calling our hero command create generic method. And now, just as I'm writing this, I'm realizing that I can go back up to the definition of my list of commands. I don't need to declare this as new because the start method is always going to create some initial commands for me here. Finally, let's have a private method here, execute command, that accepts the list of commands and awaits the command invoker to run them. All right, last piece of the puzzle, we need some way to test this thing. So in the update method, let's check to see if the user has pressed the one key. So when the user presses one, let's execute command and we'll just create a new list here and send in the single command. And then if the user presses the two key, we'll execute our list of commands as a combo. Okay, nothing left to do, but go test it out. So if I select my hero in the hierarchy here, you can see I've already got the animation manager and the hero components on here. I just need to add the new component, our command manager. So let's get that on there. Now, the first thing you're gonna notice is that all of the interfaces are exposed here. Now you can drag and drop things into this field if you like, but in this case, they're all already being created in the start method by making calls to our hero commands static create method. So if we just press play here, you see all the magic at work. So it's populated our hero into the entity field. We've got our single command, which is an attack. And then we've got a list of commands that we can order any way that we want. So let's press number one here. You can see I've got an attack. So that's no problem. Attacks goes right back into idle. Now the combo, there we go. Attacking, spinning, and jumping. Just executes them all in order. And now we can just rearrange them however we want. So let's flip them around here so that the jump is first, then spin, then attack. Now I'm sure you can picture where you go from here. You just build a little GUI element where your player can rearrange their combo any way they want. And now you can just send this list around to anything you want. You could pass this list of commands into a state of your state machine, for example, if you're going into an attack state. Or if you have multiple units and you're just trying to set up actions for each one of their units before you run your play, say, you're, uh, in your big RTS, then you just queue up all these commands one by one. Keep selecting a different entity, set up the commands that you want to execute for them, set up combos if necessary. All those things get handled by your command manager. And when it's time to run them all, just send them all into the command invoker 
one by one, they're all going to fire off. Now, I'm just going to jump into code here quickly because in this case, I'm just creating the commands and executing them as soon as the buttons get pressed. So I don't really want them to continually being sent into the invoker if something's already running. Let's just create a little guard clause that'll prevent that. So we can have a Boolean is command executing. And so if it is, we'll turn the flag on. If it's not, we turn it off. And then in the update method, if there's a command already running, let's just bail out. Okay, that's as far as we're going to go with the command pattern today. There are so many uses for command, and to be honest, it's probably the third most often used pattern in my daily work after factory and builder. Remember, the easiest way to think about a command is that it's a method or several methods wrapped in an object. And once it's wrapped, you can treat it like data, store it, organize it, and pass it around. Hit that like button if that helped you out. And subscribe to the channel if you like. New videos on software engineering applied to games every week. If you want to see more content like this, click on one of the boxes on your screen and I'll see you in another one.